Hey guys, what's up? It's FalsePools123 and this is day 80 of my daily quarantine challenge. So, definitely getting up there. I never thought we would get this far when I first started this. I was thinking maybe uh, 30 days max, but that shit ain't happening, so... Yay! Anyway guys, you know, I just want to thank everyone who's out there protesting, everyone who is just trying to help, like, you know, see the change they want to see in that world. And I'm very happy that there are people out there that can... They're doing so much. I'm trying to do everything I can in my own small way to, like, you know, I guess, use my voice, like, you know, help uplift people that, like, you know, are struggling. And I can't do very much right now with, like, you know, my position, with, like, you know, my ability. But I do what I can to educate myself and to, I guess, do my small part. Because it takes everyone to help change these things. Like I said before, this month I'm trying to focus on... Black voices, I'm trying to focus on queer voices in my reading selection. These are the types of things that I want to deal with. These are the things I'm trying to educate myself on. And I was watching, um, I believe her name was Bowties and Books. I really love her channel. Um, if you guys, I realize that I have like 10 subscribers, but like, if you guys haven't like watched her yet on booktube, like she is just, she's so awesome and I love her stuff. And she was talking about like, you know, how we should, we have to do like, you know, the intersectionality of this. And I think that's a really good point that like, you know, Everyone is affected differently, and I think it's really great that we should be able to see things from that specific perspective, along with these more generalized perspectives of queer identity and black identity and all of that. And so I definitely think that that is a really great ideal to strive for, and that's something that I'm going to be trying to strive for in my own, like, you know, reading this month. And that isn't to say that I have only read queer voices, I only read black voices, like, in a specific times. I try to diversify my reads as much as possible. I mean, I've just started reading again, so I feel that as diversity goes, I've been doing, I guess, fairly well, but let's not be defensive. Basically, it's like, you know, I try to diversify my reads, but I think that with everything that's going on, I feel all the to actually, like, you know, spend some time and really consider things from people's points of view so that I can really understand what's going on and really try to do what I can to help. So, that being said, let's get on to what I've been reading this week. Um, first up, I finished... Let's see. I finished three other books. One was, I'm going to say a short story this week, but I'm not going to get into that because I want to keep some of my reading a secret just so that we have a big blowout surprise for the wrap... for the, the end of the quarantine wrap-up. So that, like, you know, even if you've been catch... even if you've been, like, you know, watching my quarantine vlogs, even if you've, like, seen all of my weekly reading vlogs, this, or, like, and I've, before I started doing my weekly reading vlogs, I put, like, a little mini reading updates for, like, the rest of my vlog series, so, if you've been, like, watching all that, and, like, you know everything I've read, I've been keeping shit a secret, I've been a naughty little bitch, so, when you actually see my wrap-up, you're gonna be surprised. So, anyway, I did read, finish three books last week, but I also finished the first book that I talked about called Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell, I'm gonna put the cover right there. And I thought it was, um, it was pretty good. I've never listened to Malcolm Gladwell before, and I was pleasantly surprised, let's say. He, I did not know this, but he was the guy who made Revisionist History, which is a podcast. As you guys know, guys know, I'm very obsessed with podcasts, I'm very interested in the podcasting world, and so I immediately had heard of, like, you know, the podcast when he mentioned it, I just never listened to it, because I'm not really much of that sort of, um, non-fiction NPR style podcasting. Not really my scene. But I really liked his um, sense of storytelling. I listened to the audiobook, which um, had a song in it, What You Talking About, which is fantastic. If you guys haven't listened to it, I definitely suggest. I'm going to put a link down below. Please listen to it. It's like, you know, this protest song about like Black Lives Matter movement. And it's really impactful and really emotional. And I think that as, I guess, protest art goes, it's something, it's really profound. And you should... Definitely spend some time really genuflecting about it. And um, talking to Shinji, he did focus on the Black Lives Matter movement slightly. I don't really... He talked about, let's see... He talked about like a bunch of different things for a variety of historical anecdotes, which I found really fascinating. Various sort of Aaron Mankey lore style sort of story, which was definitely my cup of tea. And while he didn't get too into, I guess, the Black Lives Matter movement in a way that I found significant. He did talk about it a bit, and he did provide some insight to, I guess, proactive policing, and sort of just, like, why the policemen have, like, the history of it, 
while also being very sympathetic and not at all like you know accusing just the atrocities that happened which i thought was really nice it was very nuanced and so i like it because it provided some sort of explanation without providing a justification and it still doesn't like you know forgive like the officer for what he did for all the bullshit that happened but it also explained why it got to a point where policemen are pulling people over and why these things or like I guess procedurally happening, even though the procedure itself is completely overblown and misused and abused. And so I thought that was a really interesting point. They talked specifically about the 1971 Kansas um, policing study, which was like, you know, basically the beginning of this like style of policing and how, you know, people start about how police start basically pulling people over for small infractions as a way of basically fishing for like high infractions, like illegal gun ownership. Even though, like, you know, studies have proven that this really does not do anything at all. So, it was really interesting just discussing that. They also discuss a lot of other sort of just... He discussed a lot of other sort of, like, psychological fallacies we have when dealing with strangers. And I'm not going to get too into it because if I do, obviously you're not going to read the book. But I thought it was interesting. It was some food for thought. It gave me, I guess, a couple, like, you know, modes of thought to, like, think about. Some concepts. And I liked it. It was, you know, as... I'm going to say Omka psychology or post psychology go with it was satisfying. There was some tooth to it. But it also wasn't like, you know, super profound self help. It was just like, you know, hey, here's some observations. Here's some things about how we, like, you know, deal with people. And I liked it. It was. It was good. I don't really have much more to say about that. So I'm going to move on to my unfinished books, the books that I'm reading right now. And I started listening to So You Want to Talk About Race by HMO Alu. I hope I pronounced her name correctly. If I have not, I do apologize. I'm not the best with, like, names, any names, so, like, you know, please roast me down in the comments, call me a piece of shit, you know, the usual. And I'm really, really enjoying the book. I'm about 50% of the way through, and, um, essentially, Ejemo is this political science major, and she is essentially writing not only about her own experience, but about a lot of just sort of the oppression and sort of the issues, like, how much discussing race and with, like, you know, just racial inequality in America. And I really enjoy it because not only does she have a great sense of humor, there's some moments where I found like really humorous, which is nice because the book is very, very, like, you know, real. It's very realistic. It's very interesting. But like all these, like, you know, really shitty things that happen. And then like, you know, she brings up with some humor and it's like, it's a relief. It helps make the subject matter a bit more palatable because it is a hard pill to swallow a lot of times. I really like how she discusses a lot of things like, a lot of, I don't want to say liberal concepts because I believe just, I guess, reducing them to that partisan, I guess, definition is limiting. But she talks about things like intersectionality, about affirmative action, and she really explains the terms very well. And I like that because it gives me a better understanding of them. It helps me really confront my own thoughts about these policies, especially since when I was introduced to the concept of intersectionality, when I was introduced to the thoughts of affirmative action. It was like, you know, in 2014, where the main argument was really SJW and anti-SJW rhetoric, and everything was very much extremed. And so I didn't really get a lot of the history about, like, you know, the policies in the 80s and the 90s from, like, you know, feminists and civil rights groups really, like, discussing these things and how they were affected and the history and, like, sort of political motivations behind them. And so, given that contact, being able to, like, really hear it from, I guess, her experience really helped me connect and understand the importance of such political ideas. And I really like that, especially since, you know, I just did not get the best introduction to the politics, to those political ideas when I first learned about them because of the way that, like, you know, I guess everyone was talking about it at the time. And so, like, you know, I can definitely understand intersectionality a lot better now. I can definitely agree with, like, a lot of tense affirmative action. And it, she also discusses other things such as, like, you know, I believe she just discussed redlining a bit. And she also discussed the um, school-to-prison like, pipeline. And I really am glad that, like, you know, we can have these discussions, that we have this description, because it really helps me conceptualize just some of the institutions that oppress, like, you know, African Americans and oppress other minorities. And how this is, like, you know, a really sinister and insidious thing that happens from, like, you know, the day people are born. And it's also something that, like, you know, is tangible. It's something that we can face and, I guess, deal with more than we can do this intangible concept of just, you know, racist people. 
She also discusses the concept that institutionalized racism isn't an individual issue, but a societal one. That when the dealing with institutionalized racism is not destroying or converting or changing the extremist racist, like, you know, the white supremacists and the KKK, is essentially dealing with the more insidious ones, with the racial inequality that happens in schooling and jobs and every other, like, you know, aspect of society where we have these giant, I guess, economic disparities between race and we have all these other issues that keep, like, you know, a lot of, ra of like, you know, a lot of African Americans, a lot of other minorities in poverty and how that, like, you know, affects that it is really disenfranchised from the very beginning. And I think that's a really good concept because she also discusses, like, you know, a lot of other things and I'm really glad to be able to read this book just because the way she explains things, the way that she, like, you know, tells it is it is, it is a hard pill to swallow. It is something that, you know, we have to, like, you know, be aware of and we have to come to terms with because nobody wants to be part of an oppressive system. Nobody wants to, like, you know, be part of the problem. But at the same time, she allows us to understand that, like, you know, this is a difficult process. This is something and that one person's hardships doesn't invalidate the other and all these other things. And it really helps me deal with my own, I guess, fragility of the issues. It helps me deal with, like, a lot of other things. And I'm just really happy that I'm able to, I guess, see this perspective and really understand what she's talking about. Because that allows me to really, I guess, get a grasp on the situation and know how I can change it as an individual. And so I'm really enjoying reading the book. I don't know if enjoying it is the right word. Because it's not like I'm enjoying it like, you know, I enjoy like a nice chocolate bar or something. But I'm happy that I'm able to... I guess, learn of this situation to better educate myself so that, you know, I'm not becoming more part of the problem and that I can help become less of a problem, you know, just, so, um, I definitely think like, you know, it's a great book to read, especially during this time. If you're trying to educate yourself, if you're trying to be better, if you're trying to do better and you're trying to help make life better for everyone, I definitely think that's the type of thing that you should be reading and I'll give like, you know, of the books that I've been reading and like, you know, so, like, you know, what's helping me, like, you know, I guess, educate myself, and, like, I guess, educate my family and other loved ones. And so, definitely something I recommend. Also, um, if you guys haven't heard about it yet, I know another booktuber, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I'm really sorry about that. She's doing, um, the Blackout Buddy Reads, which is super, super cool. They're reading, um, Right Fragility and White Rage. That's the names of them. And so it started, I believe, yesterday, and it's going to be going on for, like, you know, the rest of the month. So hopefully by the time that, like, you know, I publish this, it won't be too late to um, read them. This is the 7th right now, so I guess it was two days ago that they started. I'm still trying, I don't really have any money, because, like, we're in the middle of a recession, to, like, actually get them, and I'm still waiting on my, like, you know, library to get me the hold, but... You know, I want to read those books. I don't have the capability right now. But at the same time, I'm doing my best to actually read as much, I guess, books on just, like, sort of the racial quality of the subject, like, you know, as I can. Even if they aren't the Blackout Buddy Reads. So, I'm still doing my best to educate myself. But if you guys are interested in that, if you own those books, I definitely suggest, like, you know, joining in, being part of the discussion, being part of the solution. So, if you guys, like, want to, like, definitely please check that out. Support, like, you know... The Black Creators and Blue too, because there is just so many issues in the world, and racial discrimination is so much part of, like, you know, the YouTube algorithm, about, like, you know, Instagram algorithm, about all these other social medias, as it is, like, you know, in every other aspect of society. And so, we should really be uplifting, like, you know, a lot of people in the community and doing what we can for them. Not just now, when it's, like, you know, politically and socially okay, but always. And I think that this is a great time to really. I guess, check your prejudices, check your biases, and really look and see, am I not doing this because, like, you know, I don't want to, or is it because of something more insidious of our own internalized, I guess, racism and prejudice? And so, you're food for thought, but let's move on, because I do want to tell you about the rest of the books I've read, I've been reading. Next up is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I've definitely seen Angie Thomas's name out there recently. I know she's been quoted a lot with, like, you know, a lot of religion of the Black Lives Matter movement and definitely something where you can get behind. I didn't initially know what The Hate You Give was about. I saw it and I'm thinking, like, I figured it had, like, you know, something I obviously knew it was about, like, you know, an African-American girl because the cover, but, like, I knew it was a young adult, but I really didn't know what it was about. 
And so, like, you know, recently I realized, I learned that The Hate You Give was essentially about this girl named... How do I always forget the names of main characters when I'm reading the book? Like, wow. Anyway, I'll put the name up there, I guess. Ne oh, Star. That's her name. You think I remember because it's, like, so unique. Her name's Star of two R's, which is actually kind of cool. And essentially, she watches her best friend, Khalil, get shot by a policeman. Like, you know, during a traffic stop. And so it was, like, you know, really discussing the Black Lives Matter movement. It's discussing just all of these societal issues that happen. And she's discussing her life, like, in, like, you know, these poor neighborhoods and the gang violence and the police brutality and all these other aspects and sort of, like, you know, the just societal discrimination and all these, like, you know, little microaggressions. And it's such a good book. It's... Imagine, like, you know, Roll of Thunder, Him I Cry, but it's set, but it's like, you know, set for a modern day where they're still dealing with the institutionalized racism and, like, you know, the day-to-day -day racism of, like, life, but in a very, like, you know, relatable character. I mean, not that having relatable characters is important, but, like, you really, you really sympathize and outside with Star, you can really viscerally feel, like, you know, her experiences, and it's a really great book. I can see why, like, you know... Everyone really enjoys it, why it's so profound. It's definitely something that's, like, you know, is very important. It's a very important book to have. To have this, I guess, fictionalized setting where you can explore these themes, explore these concepts, show this reality, while also having, I guess, a character that can actually take you through it, that you can experience with. And so, I'm glad to be able to read a book like this. I'm glad there's a book out there like this. And I definitely think it's a book that everyone should be reading right now always because it's really just a snapshot of kind of the harsh reality of america not like you know this glowy like white suburbia america but like the american lives of a lot of african americans and just these horrible things they have to deal with day in and day out so um wrapping up mostly i got this book just because it was on hold forever and it's just like hey you're ready to borrow and you have to borrow this or you're not going to see it for another two months and i'm just like well i got it and so i'm like and i like having like one book that's maybe just a little bit more lighter mostly just because everyone is dealing with some hard shit right now and we all need an escape from our escape sometimes and that's um, illuminate by amy kaufman hopefully pronounced your name correctly Maybe not. Maybe it's a mine. I have no idea. I'm bad at names. What's Illuminate about? Um, basically, imagine mix, imagine like kind of a mixed media House of Leaves style book, but like, um, I guess post colonial expansion sci fi. So pretty much, it's following the story of these two teenagers. They have names that I don't remember and can barely care about because I apparently don't care about like you know people names. I think one of them is Mason, the other one has a name. That's it. And they basically are refugees on this spaceship after their mining community got blown up by a rival mining community. And that's not a spoiler because they literally talk about that in the first fucking chapter. So that ain't spoilers. But um, pretty much, like, you know, it's just following them getting co-signed to the military, sort of like, you know, going their own paths and all these other things. And I haven't gotten too far into it. I'm about 50% of the way through just because I haven't been reading it as much because I've been trying to read, like, you know, more important stuff right now. And so it's pretty good. I like the mixed media quality. It has, like, these... It has, like, all of these, like, different epistemological aspects to it, which is just such my shit. And... It gets me. It's just like, this is the exact shit that I want in a book, and it's given it to me, and I'm like, it's also young adult, and I just, I'm not the biggest young adult fan, but I also love young adult just for the fact that, just the scope of, like, you know, how the characters think, because it's, has this great, like, humorous quality to it. There's just like, you know, the planet's growing up, but my girlfriend just dumped me. Life sucks. And I'm just like, ooh boy, that's some zest. Because they're just like, geez, why did you dump me? And the girl is just like, this is not the time. This is Armageddon. Can you just shut up right now, you dumb face, you piece of hot shit? It's like, fine, I'm going to go be emo in the corner while, you know, everyone's getting shot. And it's like, hmm, maybe not the best description. Anyway, but it's like, 
I like how Young Adult is just like, shit's going down, but then they're just like, let's take a Kit Kat break to discuss, like, why, like, my ex-girlfriend doesn't love me anymore, and I'm just like, okay, sis, go off, like, let's get this tea, because I just, I like the scope of that, because, like, they're still teenagers, they're still, like, preoccupied with, like, bullshit, no matter, like, what's happening, and I'm just like, I'm here for that. I like Young Adult just because it's, like, it just always has, like, all these, like, silly moments like that. I'm just like, this is what I'm down for, fam. So, it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. Um, I just haven't really had a chance to really read it that much because of everything else I'm reading. And, yeah. So, um, next week, once I finish, like, you know, some books, I'm going to be reading more books. I'm trying to, like, find, I guess, books that have both a queer and black perspective. And I have found some, so I will be listening and reading those in the weeks to come, which is going to be really nice. I also found, like, what I like Hoopla for, so, um, little, like, mini-review. Quibi, love that UI, beautiful, it's so easy. Every time I finish a book, I, like, click on it, and the first, like, little, like, flower emojis out, and I'm just like, hee hee hee, pretty cool as endorphins. But with um, Hoopla, I'm just like, don't love the UI that much. It's very minimal. There's not much, like, there, and, like, it's a bit clunky. But one thing I am liking is that it has a really good selection of, I guess, diverse reads. I ain't saying it's a great selection, but it's more. Because, and maybe that's just, like, you know, the county system, I'm, like, the library system I'm in. They don't, like, my regular library does not have... It has, like, you know, some black... It has, like, black authors. It has, like, you know, some stuff, but it doesn't have a lot of, I guess, the sort of... um. Afrocentric political theory? That sounds bad, but I don't know how to describe it. Like, it doesn't have, like, a lot of books about, I guess, like, you know, race and, like, racial disparity and, like, you know, Black American, like, stuff like that from political perspective. But, but like, you know, it'll have, like, you know, the water dances. Like, it'll have, like, you know, stuff like that. And, but it also, um, my, like, you know, what I can get on Quibi, it does not have a lot of queer, like, stuff. Like, there, it's just... Not enough lesbians, fam. Just gonna be honest with you. And I don't know if my, like, I guess the physical library is like that. I'm sure they have, like, plenty of LGBT things because my town's pretty, pretty progressive, pretty liberal and stuff. But, like, the online, like, ebook version just does not have enough. Hoopla, they got scouts of that. It got scores of that. It's just like, yo, you want gay shit? We got, like, all this gay shit. And I'm like, okay, go off Hoopla. And Hoopla's just like, you want, like, you know, black voices and black officers? It's like, we got all this. And I'm just like, go off Hoopla. Like, finally, get that diversity. And I'm like... This is nice, because I'm just like, so this is where I can, like, get all my, like, good stuff. And so, I'm really enjoying that, so, yeah. And um, what I like is that it's not just, I guess, some, it's not just, like, YA. It's, like, also fantasy and romance and, like, all the other, I guess, genre fiction? I think that's the term. Like, it has, like, genre, like very specific genre fiction, and I'm just like, yes. Because sometimes I want to read, like, you know, a high-action fantasy, but I want there to be lesbians. Let's be honest, everything is better with lesbians. That sounds fetishistic, but I don't mean it that way. You know what I mean. And it's like, so I'm really happy that, like, Hoopla had the diversity and that I'm definitely going to be just, like, delving into that treasure trope of stuff. Yeah, um, also interesting about Hoopla, if you haven't checked it out, is that it has a lot of children's fiction. Like, not just young adult, not just middle grade, but, like, you know, sort of picture book children's fiction and audiobooks, too and read-along audiobooks, which I think is, like, such a cool idea, because, like, I could totally imagine my little cousin Stevie, like, you know, sitting down, like, using, like, a tablet or something, because kids love tablets, and, like, you know, being able to read a book, and having it being spoken to him, and being able to, like, get that language acquisition, and, oh boy, do we love language acquisition in this club. And so it's, like, that's cool. Like, I'm glad that there are resources for children to, like, read things if they don't got physical books, because... Think about all them poor children who just, like, ain't be able to, like, read during the quarantine. That sucks. Like, everyone should be able to read during a quarantine. Honestly, if I wasn't reading during the quarantine, I'd have gone fucking crazy. Either that or I'd have a much bigger, like, Minecraft world. One of the two. Um, anyway, guys, I've been just kind of, like, you know, going off for a few minutes now. I've been kind of rambling. I'm pretty sure that's, like, what people click on my channel for, because that's the only thing I do on this channel. Yay. But, um, yeah. If you haven't yet, guys, please, um, I'm going to put some, when I post this, and I might just start doing this on, like, all of the episodes I post, because even though, like, chronologically, like, 
videos I've been posting online have not been when everything got, went down. But pretty much I'm going to start like posting resources to just a lot of Black Lives Matter resources to a lot of like ways you can donate and protest and be an activist. And really do not be a cash activist about this type of thing. I know I'm not out there on the streets, but it's mostly because I take care of my disabled mother most of the time, but I'm not justifying myself. I'm not being defensive, but guys, like, do what you can. I'm doing what I can. Please do what you can, even if you can't be out there protesting, even if you can't, like, you know, I guess, tear down racist people's statues or whatever. You can still be educating yourself. You can still sign protests. You can still be calling and writing letters and trying to, like, change the world. And please do what you can. It takes every single person to be better for this to change. And I'm doing what I can. Please do what you can, okay? Anyway, guys, um, don't want to, like, this would be too preachy, but you know what? Fuck it. Like, it's important, so who the fuck cares? Anyway, guys, um, I'm going to try to end this. I got stuff to do today because even if I'm in quarantine, I can't stop. I won't stop. This is like a Miley Cyrus fan. You're in ecstasy. What? Yes. I'm going to run away now. <laughs> so, wash your hands. Tell your love what you love them. Down with the oppressive systems of government, which punch down minorities and all that. And this is Phil Spools 23, and I'm signing off.